G'day, Jason the Middle-Aged Gear Junkie here. A couple of years ago, I did a video called How to Get an 80s Clean Sound. And in the comments, a lot of people asked me to do a video about an 80s hair metal sound. So I did that as well. Today, I'm gonna to kind of combine the two and show you how to put together the ultimate 80s guitar rig for the home player. But before I begin, if this content interests you, please show your support by subscribing. Once again, for this video, I've enlisted the help of my good friend, Skidmark. Dude. It's S Kid Mark. Sorry, that's S Kid Mark. And he's lent me his uh, homemade Van Halen tribute guitar, uh, which is a kind of Frankenstrat inspired guitar. Now, um, I don't actually think that this particular guitar is going to do the job for me today. Um, it sounds pretty good. Um, and it looks the part, but the problem is it's only got the one pickup and it plays terribly. So I'm not going to really use this guitar for this rig. So the guitar I'm going to use for this demo is my old Washburn KC7OV Chicago series. Now the reason I chose this guitar is firstly it's got a Floyd Rose. Now Floyd Roses were at the height of their popularity in the 80s, uh, thanks to a certain Eddie Van Halen. It has a bridge humbucker, which is essential for all of those uh, hair rock tones. But it's also got a neck single coil, something that the uh, Van Halen inspired guitar there didn't have. And so this is gonna be able to do all the clean stuff that I want, but it's also gonna be able to get those sort of dirty sounds that I'm after as well. The amplifier that I'm using for this demo is the Marshall DSL40CR. Now, it's a 112 combo amplifier, 40 watts, which means it's pretty loud. You can put it into half uh, wattage mode, which puts it down to 20 watts. So you can use it at home. It sounds great at bedroom volumes, but you can also take it out and play live with it and you will kick ass. Few would argue that the Marshall stack, particularly the JCM 800, was the definitive rock sound of the 80s. And I think that the Marshall DSL 40 does a very good job of replicating those kind of high gain tones. The DSL 40 also has a dedicated clean channel. This is something that the JCM 800 didn't have. And it also has an effects loop. And uh, the combination of the effects loop and clean channel is really going to help when I'm putting together my clean tone. <laughs> So I'm going to start off with my clean sound. Now, 80s clean sounds were very, very processed. And part of the reason for that was because of the rise of rack gear. Rack gear was being used in studios, uh, things like studio reverbs and delays, which hadn't previously existed in the 60s and 70s. And guitarists wanted to replicate their studio sounds live. So they started putting their guitar signals through these rack units. Um, even other effects like chorus was even found in rack units. So the reverb pedal that I'll be using is the Digitech Hardwire Stereo Reverb. The reason I've chosen this one is because it has the Lexicon chip inside. Now Lexicon used to make rack reverbs in the 80s and 90s and it produces a really high fidelity reverb sound that is definitely one of the characteristics of the 80s. I have the hardwire reverb set to a fairly long reverb uh, and I'm using the hall mode because hall was used a lot during the 80s. And I will probably play around with the decay depending on what example I'm playing. The delay that I've chosen to use is this, the TC Electronic Flashback 2. Now, the reason I've chosen this one is that the digital reverb setting on this, the 2290, is based on the 2290 rack unit that TC used to make back in the 80s. Um, also, I couldn't make up my mind whether I wanted digital or analog. This can do both. So although these were not available in the 80s, I think I can get a plethora of different sounds that are definitely going to get me into 80s territory. Out of all these pedals, the delay will probably be used the least, uh, but when I do use it, I'm going to have to tweak it to get it right for each individual song. Yeah. 
When it comes to modulation effects in the 80s, the definitive effect was definitely chorus. Some guys were using flange up, but just about everybody was using chorus at this time. Now, there is one brand that is absolutely synonymous with chorus. They actually invented the chorus pedal, and that was Boss. Now, Boss had six different chorus pedals that were available during the 80s at one time or another. So it really was the era of the chorus pedal. And I've dug up the most 80s of 80s choruses, which is the DC2. This is the W, which means it's the reissue version. Now, uh, this doesn't have knobs. As you notice, it's got buttons. So it has four presets. Now, um, it also has a different mode here, which is the SDD 320, which was actually a rack unit made by Roland, who owned Boss, uh, for chorus. The Dimension CW here has four presets. So at the moment I've got it set on preset one, which is really, really subtle. Two. Has a little bit more depth. Three. Oh yeah, now we're getting somewhere, and four. Four sounds like it's got the fastest rate and the most depth. The settings I'll be using mainly will be three and four. Uh, you can, uh, on this particular pedal, if you press down two of the modes at the same time, you can get them simultaneously, but I'm not gonna be doing that. Uh, I'm pretty much gonna stick to three and four. Beautiful chorus sound. The last pedal I need for my clean sound is compression. So 80s clean sounds were very compressed and they kind of had to be because there was so much information coming from the delays, the reverb, the choruses, it needed to be tightly packaged. And the way to do that is through compression. So I'm using the Behringer Compressor Sustainer. I just thought because some of the uh, other pedals that I'm using are kind of high end, I thought I'd put in a budget pedal. Now this is basically a straight up clone of the Boss CS3. So it's a very, very good clone and it will do the job nicely. The Behringer compressor here is gonna be always on when I have my clean sound happening. So the compressor is going into the front of the amp and the other three pedals are all going through the effects loop. The only other pedal in the signal chain is the tuner just above the compressor there.
For my drive tones, the basis of it is the DSL40's ultra gain channel. And I will boost it from time to time with a TS9 tube screamer. These came out in about 1982. And really that was their heyday throughout the 80s in all different types of music. But they were definitely used by a number of guys in the 80s. They were hugely popular. Uh, really the 80s was the era of Japanese pedals. So I've added the TS9 going in front of the amplifier. Uh, I've just removed the compressor because it wouldn't fit in the camera shot here and I'm not gonna use it for my drive sound. So I've replaced it here with the TS9. This is going in the front of the amp and these three pedals are still going in the effects loop of the Marshall. So the drive channel of the Marshall DSL40 sounds like this. Really chunky distortion. I can do all of my hard rock, even um, some early Metallica with that sort of sound, no problem. Uh, I have changed the EQ just a little bit. Uh, I've uh, turned up the presence a little bit and I've turned down the bass a little bit, but I will put the uh, amplifier settings in the comments below if you're interested. So for all my rhythm tracks, I'm using the amplifier's distortion. When I'm doing any lead lines or just individual notes, I'm using the Tube Screamer. And one of the great things about the foot switch for this amplifier is that it has a switch for the effects loop. So I can have all of these effects on basically. And if I'm not using them, I can turn them all off with the touch of one button. So at the moment, I've got the delay and reverb uh, on. And I can turn all three of those pedals off with one button on the floor, which is great. If I was looking for an 80s guitar virtuoso kind of sound, I'd change the uh, delay into an analog delay. Slow it down. Okay, I'd 
just shorten that uh, reverb a bit. Now you can choose to use the chorus or not. I've switched it over to one because one is the most subtle and I don't like too much chorus uh, on my drive tone, if at all. Uh, but if you're going for that sort of sound, just go for a sort of subtle setting, I reckon. And I've got the Tube Screamer with the drive channel. So if you're wondering why I didn't use this guitar for those song examples, it's because this guitar is tuned to E standard, those songs were in E flat tuning, and this guitar doesn't hold its tuning at the best of times, so there's no way I was going to put it into E flat. Hopefully it helped to reiterate the fact that if you've got the right amp and pedals, that you can get away with playing different types of guitars and still get those classic 80s sounds. So that was my guitar rig. What would be in your ultimate 80s guitar rig? Please let me know in the comments, I'd be really interested to find out. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and maybe leave a comment as well and I'll try and get back to you. Um, if you want to support this channel, you can do that by going to the Middle Age Gear Junkie store. I've left the link in the description and buying some merchandise that really will help me out. Other than that, my name is Jason. I hope you have a wonderful day. See you later.